Sorry he's been working on posters. I'm gonna sign some pamphlets. We can have during the event. English is hard as shit. I wonder why, because you just don't know how to talk, Monica. I have to agree with Natsuki on this one. You just can't freaking talk. You really are getting up on the one character who can break the fourth wall the most times, aren't you? I'm agreeing with the verse. And why did I say that? <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Avers Puma. Today we're doing some DLC World Dreams once again. So last episode we fucking separated from Menji and caused a scene. So let's get back to this. Monica and I head in. Are you two okay? Are your tummies feeling better now? Monica and I look at each other, the tension breaking just then. <laughs> you ain't not to keep look over at us while they're sitting. They come over. What are you two laughing about? Are you sure you two are okay? Yeah, we're alright. <clears throat> Did you eat something bad? Ah, uh, that's... I first stopped back at the nurse's office to get some extra bandages. I met him on the way back. Oh, okay. Well, if you're sure you're okay... I'm sure. Monica looks at the clock. Oh, I think it's time to share poems. Wow, just simple cutaway. Okay, everyone. Let's go get our poems and find someone to share with. I go over and grab Menji's bag, retrieving our shit. I turn. Whoa, you keep startling me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just couldn't wait. Fair enough, I guess? There's a bit of silence between us. I clear my throat. <clears throat> well, why don't the three of us share? I pull both my bleh, mine and Menji's poems down. Shall we begin? Monica starts by looking at my poem. The Dam. Here I stand, mixing the mortar. There I heed, packing it in. The impossibly high dam, holding back the muck, which never can be released. A veritable cup of, wow, cacophony of cries assaults my ears. I throw more mortar onto the dam's contents. As I try to silence the voices buried beneath, the voices hurt. I want to feel normal again. I shovel more mortar. From the top of the dam, I hear the waves impacting the wall. The stones dry mortar shuttle, shudder as a flood beyond's attempt to break through. Double time! I shout to no one as I mix more mortar and continue to keep the flood at bay. But that isn't enough. The dam breaks, swarming around me, drowning me. I am lost in the sea of regret, seas of fear, seas of worries. I reach out, but there's no one to save me. Someone. Anyone. Help. Save me. Then she looks at Menji's. Friendship. Adventure, awesome, amazing, happy, laughter, memories. These are the words when I think of friends. Adventure is for all the times we spend together through all life season and source of weather. Awesome is how far I see them all when together we have a ball. Amazing is just how they are, whether we're near or even far. Happy is what I feel when I spend my time with them. I hope it never ends. Laughter abounds whenever they're around. I hope to never forget that sound. Memories are what to make a think of thee, and what makes me free from other misery. I will not let my friends be hurt, and I will never be inert. Again. With that, she's doing that. I look at hers. New beginnings. A well-worn road or a grassy path. I've traveled from the former many a time, but it's now time to walk a different path. The ground is familiar, but the grass is greener, the ending hopefully happier. The path is rocky beneath the grass and my causes blisters to form. My goal, however, is clear in my vision. I finally see the home. My way is clear now. I want to have what I have not, but can I? Whoa. Again, her problem is different than the one in the game. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. Monica reads both of our poems and puts them down. Well, you both have different writing styles. Uh, oh shit. It's nice to have 20 different random words for this. <laughs> but it just looks like the minigame bled through with Menji's poem. Yeah, I saw that too. How? N no, wait. I see it. The first line? Yep, sorry, base words. Right, now I get it. Well, that's what you did to think of Menji's poem first. It's actually not too bad. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And that's not meant to be patronizing. I also feel a very slight tension at the end. I'm guessing that's because of the gameplay we did last night. Yeah. He says yeah. 
Monica nods sadly, then smiles again. I like your rhyming, too. I understand that it isn't easy to come up with a poem overnight, but it is impressive that you try to make a poem that rhymes for the most part. I'm with Monica. I did freestyle because it's more my thing, but you went the harder route. Pretty impressive, dude. Hee, <laughs> thank you, guys. I know it's pretty bad. Hey, for beginners, pretty good. And I know Sayori would love it. Yeah. Oh, she definitely will. Uh, um, can I see yours, the verse? Oh, right. Monica, hand me my poem back, please. Menji hasn't seen it yet. Oh, right. Monica hands me my poem back, and I read it carefully. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> he says it's deep. It's definitely one that has a hidden meaning. There's a lot of vivid imagery in this one. I almost gonna feel like I'm there. I can almost smell the muck. <laughs> that was my intention. Thank you for the praise. What do you think of mine? Again, it's different than the one you normally write. Your use of imagery to tell me what it is, the clear meaning are quite good. A bit of cliche, but it's not a bad thing. I think there's a couple of meanings here. One could be that Monica has her own route, but it could be more normal. Maybe she sees her life taking a new path, but if this would have beaten her poem, she didn't realize this was a game. That's an amazing analysis, Menji. Wait, you think so? What did he say? I relayed the message. That is an interesting hypothesis. What will my poems look like without the epiphany? We'll talk about that later, I promise. Look forward to it. Well, let's switch partners. She takes her poem and heads over to Yuri. Sayori, let's find another partner. Whoa! Hi! Whoa there, maybe I shouldn't have let you eat all that sugar. He. I love chocolate, what can I say? Fair enough. I put both poems down, which immediately, immediately grabs. I look over to a poem, refreshing myself with those contents. Oh, that's a different one. <clears throat> Never mind, I don't remember. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger to pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes a lot of friends, each bottle starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams, friend after friend, more bottles. Deep and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding within the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow off the dust on my bottle caps. It doesn't feel time lapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through the locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frankly pull them off the shelf one after another, holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. I read it slowly so Menji can read it. After I'm done, I wait for Sayuri to finish ours. Wow, I, wow. These are better than yesterday's. And both are some good feelings. Menji's was pretty good, wasn't it? They were both good. Menji's were an uplifting. I really liked it. Are you sure you didn't like it because of who wrote it? <laughs> well, that's part of it, sure. But I like to think that I'm Menji better than most, you know? So when I read this poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Menji poem. And that makes it feel extra special to me. I like I can feel his feelings in it. Sayuri hugs his sheet against her chest. I reach over and rub Sayuri's hair gently. Such a little ray of sunshine. He. <laughs> She can keep it if she wants. I read it for her. Menji says you can keep it. Thank you, Menji. She wants to take it again, but I stop her. After we're done sharing. Uh, yeah. Your poem of hers. It's still sad. Um, yeah, I guess that's my style. Is everything okay? Ugh. Not good. She can't be worrying about me, too. I'm fine, sorry. Really. Are you sure? Damn, she's pretty perceptive. I gotta throw her off. Really? I'm fine. Really? That's your best, dumbass? Okay, if you say so. I'm not sure if she believes you. I'd be surprised if she did believe me. She's usually perceptive about the feelings of others, but it doesn't help that my poem is painfully obvious. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. Hey! Raspberry noise. Oh. 
you. Let's get back to the poem. Oh, right. Well, any critiques? Well, I'm not very good at figuring out poems are good or bad, and I just spit all over my screen when I did the raspberry noises. But that's why it goes go with my heart. If it makes me feel things, it should be a good poem. What kind of poems do you like anyway? Well, I do like happy poems, but I also like sad poems. No, it's like the mix and like I like too. What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Bittersweet poems are pretty powerful. I can't see her liking sad poems, though. At least I didn't before. Menji doesn't think you're the type to like sad poems. Well, I like happy poems the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad little poem can give that rain cloud a hug and make it a happy rainbow. That's a good way to put it. Very poetic. Eh, is it? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Menji. Thanks, Averse. I hold up her poem. Well, why don't we get on to yours? Okay, what did you think? Menji? Sayori. Did you really write this? I relayed the message. Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I can tell. This is very good. It's pretty sad that if you look at the past, the happy thoughts. Eh? What do you mean? Well, I mean, look at the speaker. They give so much to themselves to make others happy, but where's the happiness left for them? A very good poem overall. You should be very proud. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a bit better. Writing is like magic. You have absolutely no idea. Writing is the best. I'm gonna keep writing till I die. Stop with the death flex. <laughs> Let's hope I find a long and happy life. I look forward to reading your book of poems as does Menji. Oh, yes we are. Also, can I keep her poem? Can Menji keep yours? Yes, of course. Oh, wrong voice. I need to show the rest of the club, but afterwards you can. Great. See you later. You too. She walks off. My voice is already killing me, dude. This is not good. <sighs> I decided to go see Natsuki next time around. Look, she's been waiting. Took you long enough. What are you and Sayori talking about? Poems. We sure. She seemed upset. I promise I didn't make her upset. Okay, let's see these two poems then. She takes out our poems. I read a poem for Menji's sake. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing for my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people, so she probably likes talks about spiders. That's why her friends talk like spiders too. That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she likes other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The weather is better off with spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Hey, I've got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I know we read this when we played the game, but what does it mean? Well, many fans of the game believe two meanings. Some think that Amy is a reference to Yuri, and that spider is a reference to her cutting. Others think that Natsuki is right about herself in a lava manga from the outsider's perspective. Well, let's show up explain herself soon. Finally, Natsuki finishes our poems. She doesn't look happy. Ugh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you two, not the other way around. Natsuki, did you just compliment us? No, no. I, I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles a bit. As she's struggling to think of an excuse, I press the attack. Hold up, back up a bit. Huh? You're trying to impress me, but yesterday you hated my guts. How many times I have to tell you I don't hate you, I... I... Ah, crap, I said something wrong. Guess she feels guilty about yesterday. Natsuki, I'm sorry. That was rude of me. Let's just continue. Damn it. And to answer your question, yes. I saw how you and Yuri were talking about her writing your file, and I did feel like left out. That's way more honest than I would have expected. No kidding. I'm sorry I made you feel left out. I'll try not to in the future. We both will. <laughs> fine. So, what else can you tell us about our poems? What are we, royalty? Indeed, peasant. They're not that bad, aren't they? No, it's just... At first, your poem's a bit too fancy for my taste, but it's not as fancy as yours, and I can see a good meaning. Menji's is simpler, but it's got a clear meaning, too. She chuckles. You two just got lucky, you know. 
lucky with writing poems like this. Don't get used to it. You two won't always manage to write poems as well written. I mean, good, I mean, uh, <laughs> You think our poems are good, huh? No, why are you smiling? Natsuki shoves the poems back towards me. Don't read too much into it, okay? She's definitely cute. Wait, her lines changed. What happens to say your poems were bad after all? Script, you're so strange sometimes. Breaking the fourth fucking wall. I won't, I promise. Well, anyway, you're gonna tell me what you thought about mine now, right? Don't forget who the real pro is. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, it's certainly longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's is way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. I say I make a dramatic pose. It wasn't even your final form. <laughs> You're a whale penis. Kids, if you don't know what a dork is, that is a whale penis, so that's why I said it. Guilty as charged. Anyway, do continue. I sit back down. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. But you're going to regardless, right? Yep, here she goes. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Well, that's true. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of people find out and they make fun of you nor think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and makes them happy? I think people really need to learn respect of liking others and weird things. I agree with you. Up to a point. What do you mean? Some hobbies that people are going to be self-destructive. Your manga and bacon hobbies aren't that, but there are so more intense hobbies that can be harmful. I won't ever judge anyone for their likes or dislikes, but that's just how they are. But there's some hobbies are dangerous and can lead their hobbyists getting hurt. I understand that. I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. Just look forward to tomorrow too, okay? You bet I will. And I rub my nose and it starts to hurt. <laughs> I turn and you see Yuri staring at me. Hey Yuri, I hope you're doing well right after, you know. Ah oh, no, I'm much better now. <clears throat> Excuse me. May I have seen what you've written today? God, it smells like spaghetti in my room now. Sweet. Sure, here you are. I hand you the two poems. She begins reading as I read over hers just so you see it again. The raccoon. Okay. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of my bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon as fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, the hunger, curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions on a merely satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry and more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me excitement, a rush of blood, a classing Palavonian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. This is fucking ow my English. I put the paper down and find Yuri still reading. Hmm. Looks like she's reading Menji's right now. Wake up, Yuri. Oh, sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um. I chuckle. That's fine. This is a rather unusual setting today. Session today. Take your time. After a couple seconds, Yuri clears the throat. <clears throat> May I start with Menji's poem? Of course. Um, thanks, Evers. So, Menji, this is your first time writing a poem, right? Well, yes. Why do you ask? I relayed the message. I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Could you explain to Menji what you mean? Yuri holds up Menji's again. This one is actually not bad for a first attempt. There are some pretty novice writing schemes, but you're not to blame here. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through myself, I learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is to try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and form the fit the two together. The end result is both the style and expressiveness are weakened. She sounds like an expert. Her stutter is gone. 
she's like this. When she gets on a topic she likes, she can go on. But like I said, it's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but to get them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes to practice and learn by example and try new things. I also hope that everyone in this club finds you valuable feedback. Now that's like you'd be a little biased though. Biased how? Um, well, I think everyone here is biased in their own way. We all have got our own likes and dislikes. Hmm? Sure, not scared of love for cute things and influences what kind of literature she likes and dislikes, but the same principle applies to everyone here. I was just talking to Sayori earlier, like she was telling me that she likes bittersweet literature. If a poem was a man who feel things, she thinks you're good. And there's you. Remember when you visited on Tuesday? You like deep and complex worlds, and it really shows in your poems. Yes, that's true. I still shouldn't have said that. It's alright, we all say things like that sometimes. Anything else? Um, yes. A question, if I may. Sure. Am I wrong in assuming this is an ode to Sayori? Well, that was unexpected, she's not showing up. I grin conspiratorially. Oh yeah, it so is. Traitor! Oh hush, here's the most trustworthy one here right now. She won't tell. Hoo <laughs> that's sweet. Your secret is safe with me, Menji. Grr, I hate you. No, you love me and you know it. So what about my poem? You've definitely been writing for a while, and it shows. Your poem yesterday was pretty extraordinary, but today you are quite a powerful poem. And I can't fucking talk for long. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was inspired by you and everyone else. I want to make more vivid images and leave the poem somewhat open to interpretation, just like your poem yesterday. Your visitor visibly swallows. Even your hands appear sweaty. These weak arms are heavy. Wait, am I going down the Yuri route? No, because the others like the poems too. Weird. I'm not used to this. Yuri, you okay? I don't know. I give Yuri the time she needs. Yuri breathes as I collect her thoughts. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. I know we played the game and all, but seriously, she doesn't seem like the type she hasn't shared her work. Wait, you've never shared work before? Yuri nods. I really write for myself. And besides, people will just laugh at me. I smile gently and lower my voice a bit. Am I laughing at you? Did the other club members laugh at you? Yuri shakes her head slowly. I understand how you feel. It's scary to share something so intimate as a poem, but hear me out. No one here would laugh at you. We're all friends here. Friends are supportive and caring. We would never mock your work like those bullies earlier. You think so? I know so. Your work in this club will always be appreciated. Thank you, Reverse. Um, what do you think of my poem? I was a little more daring at this one than yesterday's. You're not kidding, this amazing poem, much more metaphorical. I'm guessing the more style you're used to using? That's correct. Using poems as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. I want to express my ways that feels indulgent in my more unusual hobbies. Cutting. Damn, we've got to help her. We will. It's one of those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So sometimes I enjoy writing about them. We all have hobbies that are embarrassing to talk about. One of mine was I collect swords. I was just selling them off before I woke up here. You did? Honest to God. Damn. Collected swords? Yeah, I was terrified to admit it, but I was afraid I'd be seen as an American who would shoot up the school. Once I was 17, though, I was afraid to admit it. Sure, my former classmates teased for it, but not so seriously. It's a shame you aren't real. Your former classmates are like good people. Having people like that in your life must have been quite a pleasant experience. Well, you do have friends. You have me, Meiji, and the others in this club. They won't ever judge you. Damn right. I chuckle. Meiji just agreed with me. And I know for a fact Natsuki would too. Natsuki? Why? Natsuki wrote about something that I would like too, actually. About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest. Eh? She... she did? I read her poem earlier, but I must have missed that part. Yeah. We got into a small discussion about it. She said it wasn't doesn't matter what you're as long as you're not hurting anybody. Sh she's right. I I mean, does she really feel that way? Yes, indeed. That's well interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person to make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, p please don't tell her I said that. Yeah, it's okay. If I'm honest, I'll make sense if you did think that. I'm guilty of that thinking sometimes too. But we just need to learn from experience to keep it in mind. And please know that I will never, ever, ever judge you for your hobbies, and neither would anyone else here. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing with me. 
You're too good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Averse. I will take that as a compliment. I smile at her. It's just... how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're too thank for that. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. Her timidness vanishes. I smile warmly back at her. Anything I can do to help. Well, this is gonna be awkward. This is fuck shit sideways. Well, this is an interesting turn of events. <laughs> it's like the game can't make up his mind of who I'm appealing to. There's no harem ending, I hope. That'd be such a mess. Well, with the absence of a poem game, I'm guessing it's improvising. I wonder what that minigame is anyway. Weird, maybe Monica knows. I begin to put my stuff away as I'm pulling over this. It's Monica, so you continue to talk about poems. I see Yuri walk over to Natsuki. Uh-oh, I hope I'm not gonna get a fight. I walk over to them just in case. Ladies, everything okay? Yuri and Natsuki look up at me. Um, a verse. Hello again. Hey there, what's on this thread? You're not gonna start fighting, are you? No, you dumbass. You're just telling me something. Well, what about? Uh, well, about Nazi's poem earlier. I was just asking her about it. I see. I guess she doesn't want Natsuki to get mad at me from it. <laughs> I wonder if this will result in the beach poems. Well, to answer your question, Yuri, I mean, people who judge based off others a hobby is stupid. If you do it on your own, it isn't hurting anybody. What's the harm, huh? Yuri looks surprised by Natsuki's words. Wow, I didn't realize you felt that way. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, I didn't mean I... Ugh. Hey, it's okay. It's been my full form at acting, especially yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry. I was unexpected. Did Asuka just apologize? So damn strange. Well, um, I agree. I mean, about the message of your poem, not about... Uh... It's okay, Yuri. I understand. Go on. Yuri takes a deep breath. You're absolutely right, Natsuki. Plenty of hobbies don't hurt anyone. And it's just no one else's business. Glad we agreed on something. Yes. I'm pleased to know that as well. As both women talk, Meiji speaks up. It's nice seeing it like this. It really is, but, um... But... This may lead to the beach poems. Beach poems? In the game, sometimes Yuri and Natsuki write about the same topic. That is if the play doesn't appeal to them as much. Huh. Okay. Hey, I have an idea. Yes, so do I. Moment of truth. What's it gonna be? Three, two, one, ignition. Let's write about the same topic. Liftoff. We have liftoff. Columbia have cleared the tower. Yeah? The girls look shot as they seem to have the same idea. Um, did we just have the same idea? Looks like it. I mean, it was pretty funny that we wrote about the same thing. Yeah, I suppose it was, yes. So what's the topic you want to write about? Hmm. <laughs> That's key things hard. Remember if I'm there, she looks at me. A verse? Any ideas? Me? Yeah, dumbass. Um... What should I go? Some to decide or to decide for them? You know, I shouldn't interfere here. Well, since this is your idea, shouldn't you come up with one? Huh, <laughs> come on, Averse. No, Natsuki, he's right. Remember what happened yesterday? We shouldn't get Averse and Renji involved. I guess he doesn't want to be reminded. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Sorry, Averse. It's okay. And then when Natsuki lights up. I got an idea. Oh, what is it? That's right about the beach. Oh, why that? Because the beach is awesome. Um, well, I'm okay with that. Even if it's a bit inane. What was that? Not nothing Ten topics, bitches. <laughs> that was a surprise. I didn't expect to get involved in that discussion. So strange. What's going on with you, script? I just pissed everywhere. <laughs> okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra playing today, so everyone can come to sit in the front of the room. This is about the festival. Well, sort of. No, it is about the festival. Ugh, then we really have to do something for the festival. In this world, the game shits itself. I forgot. It's not like we could put anything together and good in just a few days. We'll just have been burying ourselves and not getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well last minute preparations. No worries so much. We're going to keep it simple and tasteful, okay? We won't need more than a few decorations. Besides, the festival's next week, not tomorrow. We have plenty of time to prepare. Sorry, he's been working on posters. I'm gonna sign some pamphlets. We can have during the event. English is hard as shit. I wonder why, because you just don't know how to talk, Monica. I have to agree with Natsuki on this one. You just can't freaking talk. You really are getting up on the one character who can break the fourth wall the most time, aren't you? 
I'm agreeing with the verse. And why did I say that? <laughs> okay, that's great and all, but there's a reason you're avoiding the question. What are we doing? We're performing poems. Performing. P P uh, Monica. We're gonna be standing performing poems in front of the other time. The tech I'm losing it, dude. I'm like losing it. All I need is you to put a bird aside that I can put them in front of the pamphlets. But the best part is we're gonna let anyone who wants to come learn some recite poems too. So he's putting all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Check it, whoa. That's cute. Sorry, heads up a pretty interesting looking poster. She looks pretty proud of it. Oh, for the love of fuck, Monica. Did you already begin putting these posters up? Sorry, puts the poster down seemingly troubled. Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, I I'm sorry. Maybe today wasn't the best day to bring it up. I mean, we never shared poems with each other in just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for to recite your poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. Besides, this week has been overwhelming for all of us, so I'm sorry. There's a tense silence, so I decided to put in my two yen. I raise my hand. Hey, can I say something? Everyone looks at me. You all love this club, right? You're a Natsuki look away. I can tell this place is special all for all of you. And Monica's been working really hard to make this a fun and safe place for you all, right? And I think it's only fair to at least give Monica's idea a listen. Sound good? I turn back to Monica. Monica... Thanks, Severse. I did overlook that fact that we just started, but I still think we should give our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and put on a good performance, then it'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what the literature is all about. Yeah, that's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And those reasons we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with the others? To inspire them and to find the same feeling that you brought you in here in the first place. I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes us to stand in front of a room for two minutes reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki Yuri remains silent. Sai looks worried. Natsuki opens her mouth a few times but closes her promptly. Finally she speaks. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get this over with. All right. <sighs> Thanks, Natsuki. Oh, wrong voice. <laughs> Yuri, I won't force you to do this. You've been through a lot these past few days. N no I'll do it. You're right, Monica. I love this club. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Not if I have to say anything about it. Now they're all in agreement. Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to practice right and bowl in front of each other. No fucking way. Monica, this is too sudden. The more you practice, the less nervous you'll become. I grab my shit. I'm no performer, but I at least like to try. Besides, you can't recite your poem in front of the club. How are you expected to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. I walk over and put a hand on Yuri's shoulder. Remember what I said earlier. No one here is going to hate you or judge you. I hope so. I know so. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips her notebook. She stands behind the podium. The title of this is The Poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> I listen eagerly, waiting to actually hear said poem. It's never shown the actual game, after all. Okay. Let's get this going. I'll go through the entire, all four of them, and I'll just cut it there. This may be a longer episode, but I just want to get this one over with, because exposition. A feather falls from a cool autumn sky, the grass gratefully accepting the offer. I look up and see the formation flying south for the winter, the ever-encroaching winter. And I stand and watch them fly by, the way they fly, the way they fly. So free, so genuine, but with a hidden order. Following the leader, the leader which experiences troubles and tribulations, 
Moas fair bear the brunt and form the V. I sit and watch them fly by. The way they fly, the way they fly. Another group of birds fly by. An absolute flock flow like water through the ever darkening evening sky. They cover the rising moon briefly before heading for a warmer chime. As I lay here forever, watch them fly by. The way they fly, the way they fly. When Monica stops. I sit there frozen in shock. That was Dimutu. She started out very strong. Her crisp, clear voice carries across the room. Her performance was flawless. She put in the right emphasis in the right places. There was some desperation in her tone, though. Subtle, but it was there. She snuck her one or two glances my way, and her eyes meet sometime. It was hard for me to take her eyes off her. Everyone was focused on her during the performance as well. Sayer looked amazed. You had an intense expression on her face. Natsuki just looked nonplussed. After a few seconds of stunned silence, I stand and clap. The four of us applaud. I can even hear Menji whistling in appreciation. <laughs> Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you kidding? You set the bar so high it was that good. <laughs> Thank you, Averse. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I, I, I'll go next. Wow, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium, and I just turn country. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at the each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... After image of a crimson eye. Yuri anxiously glances at the each of us. Her voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. Yuri's shakiness slowly vanishes, revealing a calm confidence as she speaks. Not like Monica's boisterous confidence. It's like how she talks about her books or anything that interests her. Agreed. That's maybe what it's like in her head. Fierce and confident, boiling with emotions, waiting desperately to be expressed. And you thought the literature club would be boring. When I did, I say that. Oh, hush and let's listen. With a single step, I reached towards you, my crimson-eyed angel. You reach back, your eyes color of ember. Your slightly torn wings spread inv invitingly. We begin to embrace, but your eyes flash as you vanish, leaving emptiness. I implore you to return, arms outstretched, a feeling and handfold. Gloom overshadows me, an eternal mist outstretched. All I could see is your eyes, pale green of my retinas. My charming angel, my lovely self, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? My angel, my angel, where have you forsaken me? A soft breeze envelops me, and I feel the thin tendrils of my angel's fingers on my shoulders. The crimson of your eyes illuminates the mist. I turn and face you, afraid and glad to see you. Your eyes aflame with emotion, your wings aflame with comfort. I reach out again and our hands intertwine. My angel, my crimson-eyed angel, I can never forget your eyes. For even you are not there, I can always see them in my dreams. Eventually she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Her normal nervous personality returns. I... I begin clapping first. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. You're a magnificent doyle. You'll do very well next week. Uh, I hope so. As we applaud, Yuri holds a poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. My turn. Sorry, hops out of the chair and chiefly walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? No worries, Sayori. Try not to think of it as like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting to yourself, like in front of a mirror on your own head. It's like your own poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. She begins, somehow it feels like her soft voice brings out the raw emotions of this poem. Performance is a dynamic as full of emotion as Yuri's. It actually sounds bittersweet. I love my meadow. The grass is soft and cool, the breeze cool and refreshing. The sunlight warms the salty dew under my feet and on my face. The grass is like a long lost friend, into its shade I like to descend. The sun rises and gets hot, I look around for a cool spot. I look for shade and see a big tree, I run towards it and sit against its strong bark. The meadow covers the world like a warm blanket, the shade is cool and inviting. I really love my meadow, infinite lines of grass all in a row. It's warm and cozy under this tree. The rosy breeze just feels so free. Mimi just wants me to stay forever. I really want to stay here forever. Forever. Sorry you finished as we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. I guess that's a good sign. 
You came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you perfectly. Thank you, Monica. I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just a bit embarrassing if you do it in front of everyone. He, <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. You did really well, Sayori. I'm proud of you. Thanks. Now, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> Don't make me go before a verse. It's not like I compare to any of you anyway, even him. Natsuki! Wait, that's different from the game. Does she feel like her poem's inferior? I walk over to Natsuki's desk and kneel to her right. Natsuki, I loved your poem for today, and I'd love to hear you perform something. Besides, it's not fair to comp for you to compare yourself to the rest of us. He's right. Monica walks over to the other side of Natsuki's desk. We all have our strengths and weaknesses. You have your own unique way of writing that deserves to be heard. Fine. I'm going, I'm going. N Natsuki, Natsuki. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. As she goes up, I lean over and whisper to Monica. That girl is a dare, a sun sundere. She snickers. Natsuki reaches the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why you're all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. <laughs> Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her face softens. While she's still a little bit unenthused, I assume she wasn't enjoying it. In my backyard, there's a trampoline with black outlines and gravel between. When no one's around, I like to jump. I jump and jump until I can't anymore. I love to jump. I mean, who doesn't? I reach towards the sky. The world is so distant. I can't be bothered whenever I jump. I've never felt this freer since it before. Why do I jump? Lots of people ask me why. Because it feels like I'm flying, that's why. I always wanted to fly. It sounds so fun. Because if I could, I'd go through the clouds, I'd soar. If I could fly away from it all, I would. The ground below is hard, the sky is so soft and good. It's peaceful and fun, it really can't be beat. It's freeing, I want to fly all the time. I wish I could jump and fly all the time. Natsuki finishes, and everyone's applause. She hops back to her seat. Your turn, big man. Oh uh, yes, the truly talented one. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me. Thank you for all standing in order of tallest to shortest. It is. And also the biggest boobs to smallest boob. I appreciate that. That's really welcome. My poem is called The Dam. I recite my poem. I'm not an ordinator, but I flub up a bit at the beginning. But I continue to get more and more confident. The world flows for me as I read. When I finish, the girls look at me stunned. Monica's the first to applaud. The others quickly join. And, well, except for Natsuki, she applauds begrudgingly. I'm so glad you guys came through. Hopefully you got a taste for what it's like. Yeah, I guess it'll probably be easier for the strangers, though. Wait, really? I think it'd be easier the other way around for me. Well, if it's in front of strangers, I can put any face I want. But it's in front of the club members and friends. Well... Her voice trails off. I get it, yeah, that makes sense. Trust me, Natsuki. You won't have to worry for the time festival. Just make, please make sure you pick up home enough practice for the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets so you know ahead of time you'll be reciting. Will do. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's still coming, but I hope you at least try and write a poem for tomorrow, too. It's been working out nicely so far, and I'd like to try to continue. As for the festival, we can finally do TLs tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. You can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Yes, you can. I stand up. Man, I'm so glad you're in charge right now. Wait, huh? Seriously, how come? There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica. Ooh, yeah, I mean, that's understandable. How do you do it? Do what? Find the enthusiasm. Huh. Ever heard the expression, fake it until you make it? Yeah. There's your answer. Huh. And besides, now that we know, I can't afford to make a mistake. Or it's game over, man, game over. Right, of course. I turn to Sayori. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. Even if it's a verse instead of Menji. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? He. <laughs> She's Menji's bestest friend, and he is still here. I tap my head and feel my face flush at the same time. Must be a little nice, though. How am I supposed to respond to that? Wait, going home with her? She's a very nice, she's a cool gal. It's okay, you guys don't have to say it. <laughs> if you're sure, then let's go. I got my stuff and just about to leave when I realized something. Turn it back and see Monica beginning to clean. Wait, I thought Japanese schools had managers that took care of that shit. Has Monica been taking care of this whole time by herself? Now I feel bad. Wait, sorry. We should probably wait for Monica. I point to where she's cleaning. Oh yeah, Monica. Do you need help with anything? Huh? 
What do you need to do before you leave? Um, I normally do sweeping and cleaning. Please quickly rush back to the closet. I got a small broom and dustpan combo. We're gonna sweep in the room. I'm be laughing. I'm gonna raise the desk again. That chocolate was a mistake. You're a softy. Natsuki pats my back hard. I wince. Oh, watch the injuries. You'll be fine. I wasn't even using my full power. Oh, Jesus. I roll my eyes, but chuckle. She giggles and heads off to organize the closet. I look over at Yuri. Whoa, she's cleaning the desk with paper towel and a bottle cleaner. She's humming something. Can't place the tune. I walk over to Monica. She looks up to me. This didn't happen in it in the game? Any other run through? Nope, this doesn't happen anywhere in the game. Unless she had his own route. Good point, it makes sense. I look over at Yuri. Yuri, where'd you get the cleaner? It's in the closet. I grab the second bottle and paper towels we get clean the windows. Monica looks unsure what to do for a bit. Snapping out of her rear, she quickly grab another bottle of paper towels and wash the windows on the other side of the room. Soon the room's spick and spared. That was worth the extra time. See you all tomorrow. Sorry, Monica, let's go. I turn off the lights, we all leave. I'm probably gonna leave it there, because honestly, this is the way home, and I'm probably gonna talk in the next episode about what we're doing at home. So everybody, my name is Alvarez Puma. Thanks for joining this episode. Sorry it's longer, but I'm just trying to get videos out because I'm moving. So everybody, tune in next time for the next episode of World of Dreams. Stay safe.